discovery. So you find that before every launch from NASA or SpaceX or from the Eurospace Agency or Japan, um, Japanese exploration, um, this roof is open and it's looking down a particular patch in the sky and it's looking for uh, space objects down to three centimeters. Mm -hmm. um, and it's taking the measurements, it's sending them back to the supercomputers. The, uh, the uh, space agencies have access to the supercomputers and they can determine whether or not there's a, an object that's going to fly past their uh, trajectory that they're going to go through. They can either delay the flight or change it slightly so it bypasses. How many are there in the world? How many are there in the world? I'd say about 80 around the world. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very important piece of equipment. Mm. Yeah, now this originally was a uh, home for a telescope but we were going to get from the university in the this is actually uh, the original. It's going so well that uh, our guys thought we'll build the foundations, we'll build the wall, and we'll build the um, base of the telescope. It's going to be a 24-inch telescope. It fell through. No telescope. So it sat empty for a few years, and then about five years ago, um, the indigenous people of this area said, look, um, this is sacred ground. Uh, we used to do star watching here. Why don't we dedicate this to uh, indigenous ground? Oh, yeah. So uh, Peter Farmer and his son, uh, they came in and they did the murals on the wall. This side is the, the male wall, and it's depicted by the, uh, sorry, the Milky Way, the EU in the Milky Way. And we've actually got a, a photograph of what it looks like. Uh, there you go. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah. Yep. So the dark part is the EMU. Mm. Mm. Okay. So the emu's head is where the sun crosses, and the neck is where the two pointers cross. So you're quite easy to find. Scorpio, the tail or the sting of Scorpio is always at the centre of the Milky Way, and that's normal just right above your head. So on a clear sky, and you don't get too many of them in July, but if you do get up at three o'clock in the morning, uh, and it's a clear sky, and you've got the Scorpio, uh, you can, it's quite easy to see where the sting is. Only in the morning. <laughs> Um, that's the centre of the Milky Way, and uh, you've got Sagittarius on here. Now, the story goes that when the feet of the emu is touching the ground, <coughs> the indigenous people use it like a celestial calendar. That's the time to go hunting for emu eggs. And then, as the year passes by, the Milky Way will move overhead, and the feet will settle over into the west. That's the time to kill the old emus. So, um, basically, um, they used to farm the emus uh, from a, well, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago. On this side of the sky, uh, dome, is the female side, and she is a celestial body. Uh, before man, this is we're talking about indigenous history, before mankind was to walk on the planet. Her name is the Charnak woman, and uh, she came down from the heavens, and she walked along the beach uh, by Perth, and she was picking up uh, what looked like uh, uh, jewels in the, in the rocks, and she used to put them into her hair. But what she found is that when she put them into her hair, they actually started to become life forms. She was then, should I say, these life forms attracted the magpies, who then came in and started pecking at them to eat them. So she ran off into space, uh, but on the way across, she, uh, her footprints are the lakes that you see along the uh, west coast of WA, all the way up to Joondal of Lake. And then she turned east and uh, went up into space and wave rock. But when she went into space, the Basically, the life form streamed out of her hair and they became the Milky Way. Mm -hmm. Now, they became the stars. But the story goes that every so often, you'll have shooting stars coming back to Earth. And these life forms became the indigenous people of WA. So that's their story of how mankind came to walk on the planet. Quite nice, actually. Okay. So that's a history. <laughs> so, also depicting on this side, this is uh, Pleiades. Um, these are the seven sisters. Um, and I'm switching to Greek mythology now. So Pleiades um, was being plagued, I should say, was being harassed by Orion, Orion the Hunter. So um, Orion the Hunter was also, um, I should say, dating Diana the Huntress. Okay? And she got really upset with his uh, philandering. So to protect the girls, um, she put Taurus the bull in between 
Orion and Hoyabees, and you can see that quite clearly. However, that didn't stop him. So uh, one day she sent a uh, Scorpio, a uh, Scorpion, to sting him, and that's the, the red dot, the red star on his shoulder where he was stung, and he died. <coughs> But you'll never see Orion and Scorpio in the same skies together. So as Orion sets, Scorpio rises, and that is the start of winter. And then as the year uh, the passes by, uh, Orion rises, uh, Scorpio sets, and that's the start of uh, summer. Mm -hmm. Rolls, isn't it? Scorpio keeps getting Orion. Yeah. We've only been uh, present once for a smoking ceremony, yeah. uh, and that was actually done by the um, um, Indigenous Society of the Kamalanga, and uh, they were invited to come and uh, have a smoking ceremony. Yeah. 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 We've only been uh, present once for a smoking ceremony, yeah. uh, and that was actually done by the Indigenous Society of the Kamalanga, and uh, they were invited to come and have a smoking ceremony. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
heavy trucks was coming down the road here, and the vibration was coming through and actually distorting some of the photographs. And uh, light pollution was also getting worse and worse. And that's the reason that they moved from there to here in 1965. And they, they knew what it was uh, in 1966. However, going back to these days, there was no electric power.